have no idea where this particular title came from. It was an inspired thought that there should be a discussion uh, in the name of family and culture. And, uh, and uh, I took it up. And uh, whatever it is that we are going to uh, discuss is something that I think should be of help to every single family. That does not mean we are experts in it. We are also trying our best to be good at it. And so the word family, most of us are familiar with it. And even culture, we are familiar with that particular word. The question is when they come together, family and, uh, and culture. So uh, the question is, uh, what, what is culture? What does that word culture really mean? And perhaps this is where we can start our discussions about uh, this culture. We are used to the word family. Sorry for that. So, uh, Muridi, Karibu. What, what, what do you understand by that word? What can you tell us about the word culture? Asante sana. I, I think the word culture simply means the people's way of life. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a people's way of life. That's interesting. Yes. And that is now what, what we want to talk about with respect to family. Yes. Uh, Idel. Uh, what what comes to your mind when we talk of culture? Is it a security dance? I just put it the way uh, Anthony has said. Yes. Um, um, just the way we do our things. You know the way the way a certain community or people, society, whatever, the way they do their things, how they. Yeah, whatever it is they do, there's a way they do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so basically, when, when we talk of culture, uh, we've heard of terminologies or statements like corporate culture. Yes, we've heard of uh, Western culture, African or traditional culture. Uh, we know about Christian culture, or at least maybe we've heard about the same modern culture, contemporary, all sorts of things. Perhaps the one we least hear about is family culture, and uh, uh, we want to believe that it's quite uh, an important element too when we are talking of culture, and so uh, that becomes our basis of discussion today it is that which defines us our way of life as muridhi has to told us and uh, we cannot do without that culture whether we talk about it or not there is somewhat something to do with culture in us so the ideas the customs social behavior of a particular people or society that makes the culture. And when we talk of family and culture, now we are talking of all this with respect to a family. Yeah? So uh, a statement I just came up with is, culture should have two things. The, everything that we are uh, doing with respect to culture should have a meaning every aspect of our culture should have some meaning and should point us towards some direction yeah it should point us towards some direction it should be leading us somewhere leading us either to 
leading us either to uh, Christ, leading us to a particular vision that we have established, leading us to uh, some vision. So every element of our culture should have a relative meaning. It should be leading us to a particular direction. It should be pointing us to a particular direction. So the question is, does it have meaning, whatever we are doing? And where is it taking us? Yeah, does it have meaning? And where is it taking us? Which direction is it leading us to? And that is something that is very crucial in each and every practice, in each and every element of our culture. And this is, these are some of the things that people think about when we are talking about culture, yeah? Uh, work, we're thinking about how we dress, thinking about how we behave, our language. We think about even how we raise children, the foods we eat, how we pray. Yeah, and every culture traditionally has all uh, these elements. Yeah, we've more or less adopted the Western way of worship and uh, of course there is the traditionalism in it and that's why in our catholic liturgy we have also the dance which in the western culture is not permissible yeah because uh, liturgically uh, when we think of prayer or worship or praise an african cannot do without a dance and so we must think of all these things when we are talking about culture yeah, thank you everyone. I'm happy to be here and I'm Edna has already been mentioned by Paul. Uh, so uh, in thinking about our family culture, it's good that we also think in line with what is our mission, because it is our mission that will guide that culture. What is our vision and what is our what are our values? Like today, we experience a lot of mental issues within families. Suppose we had a value like being open, openness, friendship as a value, then some of, of, of these issues may not be there because from the word go, we, we will know as, as part of families that whatever I am feeling, I can always share it because I'm a friend, to my mother, to my father, to my children. I already know that our values allow me to be open. We encourage openness in our family. So then it means I can always share anything that is concerning me within our family. So it's uh, about uh, being intentional. What are those values that are guiding our culture? They are guiding the way we think, they are guiding the way we behave. They are very dear to us. What are these things that are important to us that we really care about as a family? Yeah, uh, and, and so at this point, we will be discussing some of these issues uh, one by one, as had been uh, mentioned there. So we want to believe that our culture is going to be defined by where, what is its meaning and where is it leading us? Is it helping us to accomplish our mission as a family, our vision? Is it within our values? And that should be able to put it into context. And so we can get started with one of the elements and that is language. Yeah, so when we uh, think about language, for example, we have various languages uh, we have adopted the Western language. Uh, what, what the language that we have adopted in our family, there are families where you cannot, for example, speak any other language other than vernacular. If you want to speak any other language, you speak it out there. So that is a culture for a particular family. What, what is the meaning? Maybe it is uh, so that we are able to appreciate our ethnicity, appreciate our background. We want to be rooted in our culture. And we think that if we do not do that, then probably 
we are going to be alienated by the Western culture, for example. There are those language, uh, some of us are very free. We encourage uh, Sheng, for example, in the house and uh, everyone can speak Sheng and it is okay. For some of us, you, we, we may insist on speaking good Swahili language, if it is Swahili or uh, English, if it is vernacular, then we just stick to that. What is it that we are speaking about in our family? What is it that we discuss? How do we communicate? Uh, there's a, 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 another, a, a, a story maybe I can share where there's another day we were sharing with my colleagues and it was about Prophet Owur. So one of my uh, colleagues said, you know, that one, even my daughter, and that time the daughter was around seven, eight years, even my daughter says that is an imposter. And when I thought about that, in a, a, a child of that age, talking about somebody, some pastor or some preacher as an imposter, that is information or language that maybe she had in school or she had it in the house. And from what the mother was uh, trying to say, she was confirming that actually Prophet Owur is an imposter. He impose, he's imposing himself as a prophet. And from uh, my background, having gone through catechism, we were taught that anything that is uh, related to God, anointed by God, whether it's a pastor, it is some church of God, whether it is some seventh day, uh, day church or Muslim church, we should respect it because it is something that is anointed uh, for the service of God. So I, I, I thought that that is uh, a sacrilege from my background as a Catholic. And that kind of language, I may not be able to speak about it in my family. I may not be able to encourage it. And it may be a taboo to talk about maybe some preacher somewhere as an imposter. So what language is it that we are speaking in our families? What is the meaning of that language? Why do we encourage it? Where do we want to go with that kind of language? Are we intentional about our language? Uh, if we appreciate the Western culture, we want our children to do French and those are the languages. How is it important to us as a family? So those are some of the questions that we may need to ask ourselves and, and just be intentional enough and see whether the culture we are building around that language and even the way we communicate in the house is something that is building us or, uh, or, or not building us. For another example is, um, they, I once had somebody mention that fathers are very good at saying this kind of words, thank you, please, uh, when they are outside, but when they are in the house, it is a very tough kind of language for them to speak. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, but if as leaders, as parents who are supposed to be leading by example, if we are finding it very hard to speak about that within the house, and yet we want to build children who are able to uh, express when they are sorry, uh, express themselves, excuse themselves, have good manners, know how to communicate, how to listen attentively. Are we being intentional? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, language is part of what defines us and can become part of a big part of our culture as a family. The vocabulary that we use, uh, the stories, the examples that we give, uh, the jokes that we crack, whether we affirm people or we bring them down, that becomes part of our culture. And as Edna says, we've got to be intentional, we've got to be deliberate. What, it, what it does it mean to us and where is it leading us? Is, is it leading us to where we want to be or is it just there? We don't attach any meaning to it. It's just part of uh, life, yes? We just speak anyhow. So our language forms a big part. And the second thing we'd like to share about is a taboo. Some of us have heard of this word taboo, or we have certain taboos in our own uh, traditional cultures or something like that. Maybe somebody can share with us uh, what, 
what are some of the taboos that you are familiar with, maybe from your background? Yes, Arthur and Emma, maybe you can say something about that. Any taboo, something that was a taboo, maybe in your family, something that was a taboo when you are coming up, you could not think about it. Um, a woman is not supposed to pluck pumpkin leaves, otherwise the leaves die and you become barren. Beautiful. Now, what, what was the meaning of that? Did you attach, did you have any meaning with it? Did you see how that is related to the alleged consequence? No, my, my grandmother told me that, so I didn't pluck the, the leaves. Good, I let good. Them out. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Most of us, uh, yes, Sakwa? Yeah, uh, from my end, uh, we used to be told uh, if you sleep at the house at night, you don't throw the rubbish. You throw the rubbish in the morning and uh, it never used to make sense eh? but mm -hmm. just to come to think of it later uh, we realized that uh, you know most of our houses were using coroboys eh? those the funny lanterns eh? yeah so the obvious thing is that the house was not well lit and so if yeah. you're sweeping at night those on an obvious thing that you could sweep something valuable and throw it away so before you sweep in the morning now finally to throw the rubbish away you actually told me you have to check through so I think that was basically the reason, but uh, they just used to say, don't sweep and throw rubbish away at night. I think they used to say, we talk with a spuza bahat. True, true. <laughs> that makes me remember that uh, they used to say, you know, for us fishermen, eh? some people don't believe I'm a fisherman. They used to say that you don't wash your hands uh, with soap after you've eaten fish. You are chasing fish away. Yeah, <laughs> I've never understood the meaning to date. And uh, uh, I'm not very sure uh, where it was generally headed to. So some of these taboos were imposed on us and we really did not understand them. But again, within our families, we can also have taboos. Yes, for example, uh, you'll realize that uh, you are forbidden um, like my dad told me, uh, I can't go to disco. That is, that is like a taboo. It's unimaginable. I can go to cinema. If some of you remember, there used to be mobile cinemas moving around the markets. That one I was allowed, but not disco. In families, people can have certain things like that are taboo. They, they are just forbidden. They are things you cannot just do. And uh, we should be able to understand their meaning if we explain their meaning to the members of the family. For example, uh, let's say, for example, sleepovers. Sleepovers can be things that are unthought thinkable. We cannot just think about them until they are explained. Why can't we just do sleepover? Okay, do we share values, same values with those people and something like that? Uh, maybe uh, you'll, you'll get in certain families as uh, things like uh, maybe men or boy, uh, boys in that family cannot cook. Yeah, the day you are found cooking, it's like that is a miracle, something you've broken some law. So we can also have such things like maybe during food, we don't watch TV. You see, it's, it's just unthinkable, it's a taboo. We don't receive calls when we are uh, talking or when we are eating or something like that. So we can also form what we'll be able to, uh, th this is something that is forbidden in this family, we just don't do it. And we are able to explain the meaning and we are able to explain uh, 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 if we practice this particular thing, where are we headed to? So we can have things like, in, including washing, maybe somebody, you know, the, these, uh, the utensils uh, cannot be washed at this time or they can be washed at this time. There are things that guide us, but there are some firm resolutions that we have made that are going to guide us towards the particular type of family we want to have. So there are the taboos we can set for ourselves. Uh, taboos can go as far as including marriage, yeah, we know what the church says about marriage, and we also know, uh, even for our families, what is a taboo? What is the language that we can use about marriage? What type of relationships do we encourage? And something like that. So uh, that is part of what defines us when it comes to family and culture. Within the family, we also need to know 
what are some of those things that are taboos in this house? We just cannot think about them. We just cannot uh, uh, talk about them. Thank you. Yeah, the other thing we can uh, think about is dressing. What kind of dressing are we encouraging? Have we discussed it? Why are we encouraging that kind of dressing within our families? If we look, we see a Muslim or a nun somewhere, we, there's some, something that that already tells us. Uh, maybe Idel, you can just share, suppose you, you saw a nun somewhere or a Muslim somewhere, let's say you went to a disco and you met this nun, what, what would that tell you? How would you feel about it? Idel, Idel, are oh. we going to do? <laughs> no, I will say uh, it's about the cloth, their clothing, and that uh, clearly defined that uh, they are Catholics, they are in their religions. So that's our, and then, yeah, I remember there's a time I was uh, somewhere out of the country and then we went to this place where it is, it was dominated by Muslims. So we're told that we must wear those buibuis for us to be defined, because that's now, that is how it is normal for them. Yeah, so they had, we had to dress up in, uh, they're called what? Those clothes, hijabs. We buibui and hijabs. Yes, so we had to learn to do that so that we can uh, feel like we are Welcome. We are we we can feel normal. Yeah, in that society. Yeah, and I was just asking. Suppose you went to some disco. It is uh, let's say one a.m. in the morning, and uh, there is this person dressed as a nun, or there is this nun on the dance floor. How would you feel? What would uh, be going through your mind? <laughs> Yeah, that will really be outrageous because we don't associate them with such kind of things. You see, yeah, true. Yeah, so they are very intentional in the way they dress and there is something that is supposed to communicate to us and even to themselves. Uh, that there is some respect that's supposed to be there. There, is, uh, there are people who worship God, who respect God, so uh, there are things that you may see that will be clashing and they'll not make sense. And that happens in our families as well. Are we free? Is it freedom? You, you address your choice. What is the meaning on, of the reason why we insist that if you are wearing a trouser, it has to be like this kind of trouser. We've had, a, 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 for example, our younger children, the uh, girls who is uh, uh, five and six or four and five. I keep Something forgetting like that. Na nowadays. Yeah, but because there are children out there who are wearing these bikinis, they're very small shorts. They also feel like there should be days when they wear them. But you tell them, you see, when we, we go to Mombasa and we are in the ocean and it's hot, then we can wear the, that kind of dress. But when we are out here, we have to dress decently. So uh, when we are dressing and uh, we are discussing about dressing in our families, what is the meaning of whatever we are proposing? Is it free? Uh, are you, uh, can you wear the tumbo cuts? I don't know if there's a better name for them. And the bikini when you are in the house or when you are going to church. What if uh, the, the cleavage that we live here for us girls and the, the young teenagers, we are leaving some clean cleavage here so that part of our breasts can be seen. What is the intention? When our children are dressing like that or we are dressing like that, what are we communicating to them and what direction are we heading to? What is the meaning of that dressing? Are we able to uh, come to a, a, a level where we all understand that if we dress like this, then this is probably the meaning it is conveying to the other person. To us, it may be a different meaning, but to the other person, it could be this, and this is, is what is 
it probably can lead to, which is not the desired uh, uh, place where we would have wanted to be. So what kind of dressing are we encouraging in our families? What kind of, uh, if it is uh, the makeup, what kind of makeup can we do? You see, there's, there, there's, there are also different types of makeups. There's some, there are some that are just, uh, at times they, they scare you. Like for example, the artificial eyebrows. Some people would put so big that when you look at somebody, it gets scary. What is acceptable within our families? If it is the earrings, what is acceptable? Can we start wearing earrings and doing the, uh, our nails as young as when we are, we are at one or there is an age limit where we can start doing A, B, C, D? Yeah, so what is the dress code in our family? What are we encouraging? What does it mean to us? Because I've, 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 I've also heard about other people who say, you know, she's young, like these uh, pretty little children when they are two, three, five years, and then we dress them like in those bikinis and they look very nice. Uh, it is, and, and we feel like at that age is okay. But when they are now, let's say teenagers and they want to continue dressing like that, then we start telling them now it's not the normal way they should dress. Is it the right thing to do that at some age they can't wear them and then when it reaches some age they can't or we should deliberately say no we are not going to be doing this. So it is just us sitting back and asking ourselves these questions so that we don't we are deliberate enough we don't see our daughter wearing some very tiny thing and that is when we want to discuss it when they are ready to go for a party. They should have already known that in this house, this is how we are supposed to dress. And we dress this way because of A, B, C, D. Uh, Paul should mm. uh, share the next. Yeah, thank you. My dress, my choice, or bottom-up approach, yes? Bottom-up, yeah? You, you can have, <laughs> I think, <laughs> where you expose lots of things. So uh, that's beautiful. Uh, clothes define us. The next one we can talk about is food uh, uh, there are certain foods that we know uh, like in a in a, in, a, in a gikui community uh, i'm told when there is a wedding we should be able to see mokimo right rosa is that true if if we miss mokimo that wedding is incomplete it is true it is true right <laughs> yeah uh, uh, in uh, in, in certain cultures, like maybe in the Kalenjin, there should be more sick. That is what will define uh, that particular occasion. And uh, we also know when uh, alcohol can be taken. Recently, I learned that in the Ikuyu community, alcohol was for the very elderly, for the, for the old. Uh, and uh, not everyone would take it. But nowadays, I think we've... Uh, we've uh, somewhat overlooked that particular culture that had a lot of wisdom in it, that there is an age that you needed to reach in order to be able to make such uh, decisions. Now, food that we eat in the family will also define us, and that can become our culture. What is our uh, nature of food? Are we free eaters? Anything you like, eat. If you want four spoons of sugar in a cup, it is your choice. If you want, uh, 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 we want to eat popcorns today for lunch and in the evening we are going to eat a pizza whatever as long as we can afford it it's our choice we must be deliberate about the meaning of the food we eat and whether it's leading us to where we want to be or it's not there are families where people eat clean food only there are families where people eat sweet food they are guided by the taste this is yak this is yummy there are families where they are guided by the source of food. Uh, is this traditional or this, is this exotic? Is this supermarket food or is this, uh, is this GMO? Is this uh, real and things like that? So again, if we do not take care of uh, the meals that define us, ultimately, this is also what even our children are going to carry forward. They may not understand it today, but they will know that in, this family, this is what we eat. 
uh, a while back here um, in Nairobi, uh, we had uh, some relatives. Whenever any one of us was coming from home, we would be given a certain type of vegetable. Some vegetables already cooked, we bring them uh, to the children here and they would keep them in the fridge and they were eaten. Uh, things like omena, we would come from home and we are given omena because that, that defines us. Whenever somebody hears of fish, they think of luo and something like that. So in, in your family, it's also important to be deliberate on what foods do you eat and what does it uh, mean to you? What do those foods mean to you and why? Where is it leading us? That is the direction. Yeah, the other thing we can uh, talk about is uh, our money culture or finances. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil is bringing my yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. He also finances. Uh, or our money culture it is a uh, is it that the money we earn in this family is family money or my money is my money your money is my your money or there are points where we converge and come together but my money still remains my money and yours still remains your money and even about earning money in the house is it that uh for you to get money you already have a standing order from the parents so every month you just check your account and there is the five thousand if it has not hit your account by a second you are already uh, raising issues why haven't you credited my account my pocket money or do they earn do our children earn the money that we give them because if we are not deliberate with that then we uh, there's this story of somebody who was uh, was of age he had finished school and the parents also looked for his uh, his uh, his uh, employ was looking for employment for him so when he went for interview and he was asked the amount of money he would like to earn he mentioned some outrageous figure for uh, somebody who's just from college uh, so say he asked for 200,000 and when uh, he was asked why he is looking for that he doesn't have experience he said i've not been working and my parents are paying my pocket money 100,000 per month. So if I'll be working, then this is what I need to earn. So if that is the culture we have around uh, our house, that money can always be gotten on a silver platter, then those are some of the challenges that may come later in time. So it's good to be aware and make that decision that yes, I'm giving them pocket money for free and I know the consequences and I'm okay with that. So how do we earn our money? Do we earn it honestly? Uh, can we get a deal uh, that is not honest, but we still do it because that is how things happen in Kenya nowadays? Or is it that as we are of integrity and if money is coming that is not from a good source, then count us out? What is our money culture? How we earn the money? How do we spend the money? Can we just spend money on anything because we wanted it or we have to plan before we use that money? All this we need to think about and just be deliberate and we can't exhaust everything. There are some things that have worked for us, some have not worked, but where are those places that we can fix the loopholes? Uh, Edna is forgetting that there is a, a client she is dealing with uh, who uh, who uh, wanted uh, some hand uh, she she works in uh, she is a tailor she runs a big organization that does uh, uh, clothes for different organizations and so at times she would look for somebody to assist but she has a son or is it a daughter a, 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 ne ne a nephew somebody like that in the family who has done form four and is available but then uh, this one uh, came only once to assist. And uh, he was told, whenever you are available, just come. 
He came once, he was given 750 and he didn't come again. So Edna was asking, and uh, does he have money? Do you give him pocket money? Yes, how much? 1500 per week. Then she told the, the, the lady that you see, he doesn't have any motivation. He gets more by sitting down than coming to struggle here to only get 750. So somebody is already being given uh, 1,500 per week at home without doing anything. So why would you expect him to come and work so as to get 750? Money culture is very deep. It goes all the way to how we buy things in the family, whether when somebody asks for something, we just get it. Money culture goes into whether we share accounts and something like that. By the end of the day, does this money culture help us? And where, what is the meaning of every practice? And where is it leading us? Very, very important. So it's something that we've got to take seriously. It's a whole topic of its own on how to deal with money-related uh, agenda in the family. And it's one of those things that create big problems in the family. So we can always check, is it that uh, all the monies belong to all of us or all the monies uh, or, or so-and-so's money, the father's money can be for school fees and every other thing, mine is for this only. So we must think about that. Uh, this is not a money talk, but that is also a culture that can form our family or deform our family. Uh, the other one that we need to talk about are practices. Every culture has some cultural practices. In Luo, for example, we have uh, the culture of uh, the funeral, Steruburu. You see, uh, where people, uh, after the funeral of some elderly people, they go and do some, some dances somewhere, uh, all the way to some bushes and then coming back. We have some, cul some culture to do with women inheritance. The question is, what does it mean? And why is it? By the way, for, for the Luo culture, the inheritance had the issue of once somebody is married in a particular village, she should not go away simply because the husband died. So there should still be, they should still be able to raise children and such children for the deceased and something like that, hence keeping the family name. So it had some meaning, it had uh, uh, some, uh, some, some direction, it's leading people. And uh, uh, other people still practice it, modern culture tries to thwart it away. We can close the windows. So uh, in, in our families, what are these particular practices that we have? For example, when it comes to chores in the family, who are supposed to uh, do the uh, dishes? Who are supposed to spread the bed? Yes, uh, yeah, what, what practices do we have around that? Uh, about uh, work, for example, what is our uh, practice when it comes to work, the, the, the career? Does it come first ahead of our, uh, anything else, ahead of prayers? Uh, when, when somebody, when a child is uh, having uh, maybe some uh, tournament and then we also have this business meeting which one comes first and uh, do we are we people who love work or work is labor yes it is something that we must uh, we try to avoid at all cost so we must think about that we must think about our practices when it comes to uh, when it comes to entertainment you see uh, some people have a culture of watching tv the whole evening or when it comes to news time, everyone uh, should not talk. Nobody should talk. I remember in my uh, childhood, my dad used to have a radio, some uh, tiny radios and somewhat they kept coming and going. But when it was news time, nobody speaks. Everyone sits, uh, it's almost like you stand attention. No movement, no speaking, it is news time. To date, I'm not a news guy, I don't follow it. Perhaps it has some influence in me because the, those are some of the practices that people can have in a family and whether they have a meaning, whether they are adding to any value, whether they have a direction, they're leading us to where we want to be as a family, bringing us together, I don't know. But you must define your own practices 
uh, your own practices as uh, you 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 want them practices about perhaps waking up what is our time for waking up do we wake up uh, early or we wake up late maybe on a saturday we wake up at 11 uh, maybe things to do with preparing breakfast or eating what are our practices do we eat together or you eat when you like or when you feel hungry uh, is everyone going to prepare his or her meal or we prepare it together uh, does it work for us what is our practice when it comes to even cleanliness even showering do we shower when we feel like or we shower every day do we shower during the hot season and uh, abscond during the cold season during winter no showering everyone is at liberty you see what is our practice about that what is our practice when it comes to even brushing our teeth do we brush once a day twice a day do we brush after every meal or before meals how do we practice all these things so every practice somewhat forms a culture and this is something that is also going to go down into the children we bring into the uh, family that we are bringing up and it should be able to contribute to the type of family we want to have so all these practices to do with even when we come in do we leave shoes at the door or is there a designated place do we throw socks everywhere uh, do we wash our own clothes or somebody else washes them do we use washing machine all sorts of things every practice that we are doing in the family has some direction is leading us if we bring up children and i've had this in many uh, discussions enough people when children reach secondary school and they are now taking care of their uh, they should be taking care of their own clothes it becomes a problem most of them find, want to look for somebody else to wash for them and pay them because they've not been taught how to do it they cannot take care of their own undergarments and things like that because that was not a culture people were not taking a responsibility for their clothes and by the end of the day they must depend on others and so they've got to pay with money that money that you've got to pay uh, you've got to give them to pay and things like that so everything that we are doing should have some meaning every practice that we are uh, 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 we are adhering to and something like that so that is something that we've got to take care of in our families all practices whether it's waking up whether it's uh, going to sleep what time do we sleep uh, what uh, programs do we watch uh, do we just go into tv all the day do we go to work fast when we wake up what are uh, the routines and something like that very very important yeah the other thing which is worth thinking about especially in this era is technology and the gadgets what is the policy we have in our houses or our homes around these gadgets. Uh, the, we, we have got a neighbor, uh, well, there's a day I went to visit her because she had gotten a new baby. And then uh, she had another child who was around uh, two, three years then. And this child already had her own phone at that age. And when I asked why she has a phone, uh, the mother told me that she was on their case, always wanting the, their phone. So they decided to buy her a phone. And she told me, leave alone a phone. She already has a tablet. And now we even bought her a digital phone. So you see, at that age, uh, if they are intentional parents, then I want to imagine that they already uh, reviewed the consequences of that. And they are very happy with it. And probably they've seen how that technology is going to assist. Uh, their child. Today I was meeting a, a friend of mine and we were sharing. So she told me a story about the son who is uh, now in form two. She told me that uh, this son wanted a phone. She was against it, but the dad went ahead and bought the phone. I asked her, did you discuss uh, about buying the phone? Yeah, she said we discuss and uh, the father knew I was against it. But because I am always away, I only go home over the weekend. So one day I came and I found the phone had already been bought for him. And that was the time they were just joining for one. And then COVID happened. So they stayed a, 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 for a very long time at home and he had this phone. So when they were going back to school, I think that was uh, January this year, she told the boy that I need to be using that phone. So just remove password and help me with the phone. But she wanted to know what is in this phone because 
the boy is not performing well. And uh, there are many issues with the child she has noticed. So when the boy shared the phone, of course she did what many people would do. She deleted everything that she thought could be deleted, but she didn't know that there is internal memory. And the mother, because she is a, a high school teacher and they deal with these issues, she was a bit more informed. So she, she told me she took the phone, she went through it. Whatever she saw in the phone shocked her. She wanted to send to the dad, but she because it was very vulgar, most of it was very vulgar. And, and uh, even the pictures there, she decided not to share. So she told the dad, when I come, I'll show you what is in this phone, which she did. She showed the dad and the dad was also very shocked. But then, and now the dad uh, realized that that was not the best decision that he made. So she, she told me she, he just deleted whatever was there. And then she had requested the dad that when uh, the son comes, have a discussion with him and don't delete these things because he's going to say those things are not true because there's no evidence. But apparently the dad deleted and had never had any discussion with the son around this. So she was just sharing me to, with me so that she can get an idea of what she needs to do. Uh, yeah, so that is what is happening with the gadgets when we buy them at that age. And now she says the, the son is in form one. Now is when she's, he started improving. He's, he's getting C minus and C. And at that level, you want to imagine when this boy reaches form four, what, will, what grade will this boy get? And this C and C minus is now an improvement, which means he's been doing much worse. And he, she told me that, you see, I'm away, but the dad is with this boy. And the boy has already known the schedule of the, of the dad. He knows when to be there before the dad arrives. And then the dad will arrive from work and then we leave. And after the dad leaves, he also leaves. And before the dad comes back, which is maybe past 9 p.m., he's already back in the house. So the dad feels like the boy is already, he's always there. So these gadgets, when we buy them to our children, I know we do it out of love, but have we thought through what is the age that we are saying you can have a mobile phone, for example? Like in our house, we've said you get a mobile phone after you are form four, you have done form four. But then there are other in other families you get it as early as when you're in class six. Our when our daughter was in class five, when we were talking with the teacher, the class teacher about the gadgets, she told us that do you know they have a WhatsApp group? And it's only that time it, it's only our daughter who didn't have a phone. All the classmates had a phone at, at well, I think that was class six. And the teacher told us, do you know even my daughter is in this same class? and has more powerful phone than I, than I have. And she was bought for by the grandmother. So do we have policies that we are saying, no, even if your grandmother wants to buy you a phone, she tell her to wait up, up to this level, then she can buy, or it is freedom. If you do well, you get uh, your uh, results nicely, we can appreciate you with the phone. What is uh, the number of hours you can stay with the, this gadget? Can you browse and chat your friends throughout the night. So we need to be very deliberate. We need to think through before we make decisions that uh, will have uh, some consequences that we don't want to bear. Yeah, that, that is part of contemporary culture, the modern culture that everyone must have a gadget. You get into a family and nobody says hi, nobody shakes your hand, everyone is uh, uh, on phone. You go to visit people in another family, and uh, uh, by the end of the day, uh, you are chatting somebody else who is not there. So uh, the question is, what is the meaning of that culture that we are developing around gadgets, about around technology, and how is it serving our purpose? The other area is prayer. What is our prayer culture? What is, it, what is our worship culture? Yeah, we know that uh, traditionally, we always had some ways of praying. We occasionally see uh, the, uh, the Gikuyu going to pray facing Mount Kenya. 
we see people going to pray differently uh, nowadays uh, for us christians we pray the the christian way but now in the house what is our prayer culture? Maybe when people are eating, everyone prays according to his or her own uh, uh, choice. I know enough of us Catholics don't even say the Catholic uh, grace before meal. It is let's close our eyes, bless us, uh, whatever, bless this food, something, something. Amen. You will see. Uh, do we have evening prayers, mid morning prayers? Do we have personal prayers? What is our culture around prayer? In enough families do not have rosaries, by the way. Apparently, in my childhood, in our family, we did not have a Bible. A Bible was too costly for our family. We did not have one. I really longed to have one. But later, in another family where I was adopted, there was a Bible, and I read a lot of it. And the first book I loved was the Proverbs. I still do love it. And the wisdom books have come to love. So it's because there was that culture of reading the Bible. Yes, we always have meetings here, uh, family meetings sort of or gathering on Sunday evenings and Saturday evenings to read the Bible. It's because I picked that culture from my background, uh, from uh, where I was uh, being uh, brought up. Uh, uh, my mom taught me rosary, taught me to pray. And we would always pray whether I was tired or, or hungry or exhausted, whatever it is, we would always do evening prayer, full prayer, and then do the rosary, and then uh, we sleep. And I picked that culture. I learned from her the, 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 the culture of prayer. I learned uh, the culture of going to church from her. Edna, for example, did not learn anything to do with the church in their family because they were they were uh, somewhat different types of family the dad was christian the mother was muslim and everyone was to choose where he or she wants to go and she had to find her own god her own way and uh, uh, went to catechism and therefore got baptism at a later age so do we leave it open so everyone will find his or her own faith along the way or we are building this faith what is our prayer culture what is our worship culture when it comes to sunday or uh, we, uh, we say sunday in this case we are talking as family life group members who are all catholics is it a day any other day we can just go swimming or whatever we don't have to go to church or it's a day uh, people actually think about going to church and we attend the, the, the mass service, we do church related activities. What is our culture when it comes to worship, when it, when it comes to offertory, yes, uh, or gifts with respect to church and everything to do with that. We must build this deliberately and at home. Yeah, another thing maybe is a career uh do we prefer white collar or blue collar what is acceptable in our family are there many jobs that we can't do or are we free if you want to be a freelancer you can become or you have to become a doctor or a lawyer recently we got communication from school it was telling us about the form tools that this is the stage where they need to choose uh, their subjects. So we were just being advised to help them, guide them so that they can choose subjects that are aligned to their dreams and career. And uh, they mentioned there that uh, these uh, students, they've already been uh, spoken to with, they have already called a lawyer and a doctor. No, 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 no. <laughs> a, a doctor and an engineer. A, a doctor and an engineer <laughs> to talk to them. <laughs> So uh, we were joking about it and saying that is what parents want to hear, that you are a doctor, you are an engineer. So those were, that they have, the school has already taken care of that. Now they are telling us, for us who are not lawyers and, and engineers, we should be able to guide these children. So what is it that is important to us? Is it that follow your heart, follow your passion, or my, I really wanted to be a doctor, I didn't manage, so you have to become a doctor. Recently, we went to visit a friend 
and uh, uh, her daughter happened to have schooled in the same school where our daughter is. So she was also giving us some guidance and just sharing her, his journey uh, in that school. And he told us the child was a performer, was in top 100 when she did her KCSE. And she was in, in the country and was doing very well. So she, he told us that he had always wanted this child to be a doctor. And uh, the child wanted something different, but he managed to convince the daughter that you go and become a doctor. So the daughter registered in the University of Nairobi was doing a uh, uh, udaktari. Then uh, at some point, she, she said she had a lot of challenges with school. So she just told the dad that he anatomy, he anatomy in Manishinda, maybe <laughs> Maybe Saku understands that term. <laughs> Anatomy imenishinda kabisa. So he was telling us, he, he said in our language in the vernacular, nae ni raj, meaning nilitoka ikiwa mbaya. So he was trying to say, just let them do whatever they want. So now the daughter has gone to Strathmore, is doing something to do with I, I, IT. Uh, because she also got a scholarship, free scholarship, because she was outstanding in her performance. But she has wasted a lot of time. Now she has uh, decided to defer and go and try this other one and see how it's going to be. So what is our what is our culture around career? Uh, is it you, 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 uh, freedom, you choose whatever your heart wants, or you have to be this, this? So we need to be very intentional and also guide them from a younger age so that we don't get into these issues when we we reach that uh, time. Yeah, talking about that, I remember when I picked uh, uh, our daughter from school yesterday morning, I asked, uh, I understand people came to speak to you about career choices, yes. I understand two people came, uh, a doctor and engineer. She said, no, not two people. There were very many. And uh, they were only doctors and engineers. <laughs> Nothing else. All of them were doctors. <laughs> what do you remember from them? But I don't remember what engineers said, but I remember what doctors said. <laughs> so by the end of the day, these guys could bring a big crowd, but only doctors and engineers. And that is, I think, maybe what most parents want. Or want. But the question is, does it feed into your culture? I've had many people who uh, went to do that uh, degree in medicine, Wakamaliza, and then they took back the certificate to the parents. This is what you wanted. Now, will you allow me <laughs> to do what I want to do? Those are the people who become miserable. How do we bring up people? Do we encourage them to become whom they were meant to be or whom we want them to be? What is our culture around that? What is our, do we demean certain careers? Like we have a daughter who wants to be a fashion designer or fashionista, whatever that is. You know, some of us who can say yeah, I, I remember my cousin said, uh, told me a story that a friend of his, one of these comedians in uh, in the TVs that we see, is uh, a son to his friend. So he, he was saying that, oh, you know, he, he stopped schooling. Yeah, he's now he's doing something I don't understand. <laughs> that is the language we use. <laughs> they are doing some things we don't understand. The other day we were discussing again and he was telling me, you see, uh, when you look at these people who dance uh, uh, for, 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 uh, for a career, like uh, they, they, they are hired to dance. And now what do you tell people that your son is doing what? That he's a dancer. You see, that is our concern as parents. What we, how will I introduce myself amongst my peers? That somebody is somebody is a father of a doctor, a father of a team. mine. I'm a father of a comedian, a dancer, a singer. So if we demean certain careers, then we are trying to be, uh, we are trying to make people to become what we, what we want them, as opposed to what God really meant them to be. And the other element is about personal development. If we are people who have deliberate program in personal development then we will develop children who also have some regards to personal development. And this is a very critical area, though most of us ignore it. A number of, a couple of years ago, 
I was discussing with some uh, 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 parents also, and somebody was telling me, I'd like you to come and talk to my children, that they don't like reading. Uh, what do you want them to read? There are books, I buy them books they don't read. And I asked, do you read yourself? She said, no, I don't read. I don't even have the time. If you don't have the time to read and you don't read, how will they read? They don't see you reading. Most times they do what we do. That is what they will be able to do. So are we deliberate about personal development or we are not? And that is something that also forms our culture. If you are in a family where people read, you will always get readers. People will be reading. They will be reading stories. They will be reading. If you're in a family where people are watching news, there will be news watchers. When it reaches that time, it is a time for news. Everyone surrounds the TV and we are listening to what Baba is saying. You see, so we've got to be deliberate about, uh, uh, we've got to formulate a culture around personal development. Another, another one, which perhaps is the last because we cannot exhaust them, is a culture around health. What is our health culture? When I was growing up again, I, I lived in a family where I was always reminded three things and they've been able to form me that, remember, uh, I, I love telling this story, that when I left the school, the secondary school, went home, I was asked, what are the basic needs? And I said, you know, food, uh, shelter, clothing, and uh, something like that. Then I was told, you are wrong. And I was surprised. I've always answered like that, and I always got everything right in school. Then I was told, it is health. And that is why to date, to me, health is always a priority. And we must formulate a culture around health habit. What is health? What is our health culture? And that boils down to the practices that we have, whether it's whether we exercise, we bust the sun, the foods we eat, uh, whether we take medicine, we go to hostels, and all these other things. Uh, as to uh, as for us, we love preventing diseases as opposed to even handling them. We may have health cards, but it's not our priority. There are people who have health cards the insurance cards, and so they hand over their health to the doctors. It is doctors who know what uh, will be good for them. That is, uh, in our view, abdicating your own responsibility. Your, resp your health and the family, health of your family is your responsibility. And everything that will have to do with health will be your own uh, decision, whether you're going to eat healthy or unhealthy so that you go to the hospital whether you will stick to the dosage if you are given a dose an antibiotic taking five days will you take it or when you feel good you can always cheat yourself around it and that's the same way your children will do and that's the same way everyone else will do so what is our culture when it comes to health traditionally we even had traditional medicine that people would take whenever there were some health challenges what is our health hack sometimes i talk of hack what is your health hack in, in my family, for example, we take water in the morning. I've always insisted on that. We take warm water before we take breakfast. And somewhat, it, it's kept us, I believe, very healthy because I learned that over 90% of our health challenges is just because we don't take enough water. And if we just take that water at the right time, more so in the morning, we start by taking water, most of the problems go. And I've shared this thing with a number of people and somewhat they have great results. So. What is your health culture? And I think that will be good enough uh, with uh, uh, matters to do with uh, matters to do with, uh, with the, the elements that define the culture. And so uh, some of the things we've discussed are the following. The questions that we now need to ponder are, yeah, what's my family culture? And perhaps at this point, we may need to have some sharing. What is it that has worked for you? Maybe there's something that you are doing, uh, you'll share and uh, it will be an insight for me and uh, I'll put it into practice and I'll also see good results. Mm -hmm. So what is it? Some of those things that you have, uh, you are practicing in your family, they've worked for you and uh, perhaps one or two people can also pick and they practice in their families. I, I believe all of us are unique and whatever works for me may not work for you, but there are some areas that whatever has worked for you may also work for me. 
So we can have uh, a, an open discussion. You just unmute yourself and share with us. Yes, somebody. Yes. Hi, hi, PP and Edna. Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us those points on uh, family culture. Um, I, I think for us, uh, one thing I can share uh, that um, we have uh, cultivated as a culture for our family is, uh, you know, these uh, outdoor activities. Um, and basically that, uh, you know, ties in with how we spend our time, how we bond together, uh, and also uh, you know our health. Uh, so we will do hikes now and then. Um, you know, so we'll go to Longonot, we'll go to uh, Gong Hills. Um, recently, we did um, uh, this Elephant Hill uh, in the Abadeas, and it was a very good time. You know, to spending that time together um, as family. Uh, you know, enduring uh, these feats, uh, it, it also sort of gives, um, you know, the young ones uh, the sense that they can achieve anything that they set their minds on. So that, that's something that uh, for us, uh, we, we have endeavored to do um, and we have carried our kids along. Yeah. So I'd say that. Thank, thank you very much, including riding your motorcycle. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, they're coming around uh, <laughs> on that one as well. I think I also want to share something that I really think has really worked for over the years. We have this culture of Thanksgiving. Every evening after dinner, we sit down, we have books. Everyone has a small book where we write at least five things that we are thanking God for for that day. So everyone will write and, and uh, we, then we'll in the books and somehow you God for because we also thank God eh, even in adversity there's something that didn't go as we thought it should have been we we thank God then after that we will uh, read the word of God and sing and, and pray together I think it has really uh, brought, brought, made the virtue of gratitude really sink into our family thank you uh, thank you very much that's very beautiful figures yeah and maybe i can just ask a question around the hiking because at times we have dynamics in our families there's somebody who love outdoors another one doesn't like would rather just sit down have you experienced that and if uh, yes how do you go about making sure that you carry everyone along uh yes uh, i think you might have seen Neema in that one <laughs> She, no. <laughs> was a bit, uh, she was a little, a little bit uh, reluctant <clears throat> at the beginning, uh, but it was out of um, you know the feeling that uh, she couldn't do some of these things, you know, not that she had uh, gone through or attempted uh, and failed, but you know th this general feeling that ah this is for someone else, this is not something that I, I can do, but once she does it. Uh, then she realizes, wow, this, it's actually enjoyable. Uh, I can do this, you see? So it, it happens, uh, you know, like you rightly say, uh, there are those, um, you know, individual dynamics. There are people who are more, um, you know, prone to uh, sitting down, maybe taking up gadgets or reading. Uh, they're not that, that active outdoors. But um, once you carry them along, uh, once, twice, uh, they, they will pick it up. And uh, because as human beings, you know, we, we are active. I think the way we uh, were created, we were created to, um, you know, to, to be active uh, with, our, with our bodies. So if you uh, take up that activity, uh, by and by you realize that you're able to actually get into the flow and uh, to enjoy yourself out there with the rest. And we have, we have this mantra that we say that the strength of a team is known by how they treat their weakest. So we go with the pace of, of the slowest so it's that we don't leave anyone behind. Hey, thank you. Thank Very you. beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. I love that mantra. Mm. Yes, that yes, goes yes. that uh, culture yeah. of gratitude. Yeah, yeah very beautiful uh, culture of going out yeah, occasionally. That's beautiful. 
Yes, thank you very much for that generosity with information. Somebody else, some other family, some other culture. Pascal, welcome. I believe this is Ryung. <laughs> Yes, somebody else is sharing. Thank you, thank you for, uh, uh, today I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, but I know you have a lot to share, maybe when it comes to culture of your family, but you are allowed to listen, thank you. Yes, Sakwas. To, to, to pick on two, it has worked for us well. Uh, like enough for us, all our children have been in day school and we made it purposely for that. From day one of their schooling up to now, those who are in four, those who are in grade, grade two and all that. Eh? And along the way, we made it purposely to be dropping them to school in the morning and picking them after school. And uh, one of the things that we also ensured that we carry on was the aspect of uh, saying thank you and saying a prayer in the morning put God first as we start our day. So we may not be able to do that within the house that we to live, but we ensure that in the car we have a Bible, we have a book that we can be able to find a verse to reflect on in the day, and then be able to pray. So initially as parents, we used to do that when we drop them to school every morning, but then as they have been able to grow and they are now growing up, they have now taken it upon themselves that now they have shared as a children. One prison Monday, another prison Tuesday, another prison Thursday, and all that. Thing. Now, if you come to our kind of money when you're going to school, you, you, you'll have to find places you, you go to pray. And, and that is just how it is. And not only that, but also we also have our own evening prayers. We have to pray together because the week is very, very essential. As Rosa said, if we just remind ourselves, what did we do right today? What, what went smooth today that we can be thankful for to God? And if there was something that we did against the other person, then we just need to pick our conscience and ask ourselves, how best could I have handled such a situation to make things better? Because here we are a family. And if it goes beyond our family, it also goes to school. If you had someone at school, and you find this plan, then to that person. So it's very, very important to do that. And we found people uh, uh, finding space to live in good relationships and are happy. The other thing that I can also share is the aspect of TV. Uh, for us, TV during school days, I don't know, Monday to Friday. So it's only on Friday evening that we switch on our TV and we switch on our TV, find a movie to watch, watch as a family, and we're able to find anything that uh, we can do with that or care about that movie. And uh, at the end of the day, so basically, the movies that you watch are purposely uh, chosen, yeah. And, and 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 either someone has suggested to us, or we've been able to search for them and find that this a uh, movie for family that would be good. Can we learn a lesson or something out of it? So we try that. But uh, as parents, at times, me and Eden, we let them down. Eh? At times, when we start watching those movies, we find ourselves asleep. And uh, <laughs> but 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 we try. We we, we keep trying. So Friday evening is our TV day, they know that, and you can watch even up to midnight and then we go to bed. But now that we have candidates in the house, we will turn down the, a bit that down there. Eh? So up to around 10 p.m. It's worked for us well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love that uh, designated day of TV and movie. I, I know my people would be very happy with that. Only that we are very poor timekeepers when it comes to, we want to finish early so that we watch a movie, people will still finish at, at 11. <laughs> ah, good. Thank you very much. Somebody else? Yeah. Uh, any culture that you've cultivated that you may be able to share? A question there. Eh? Yes. I don't know who to ask this question uh, to. Uh, on that, I, I'm, I'm just here with my wife, Jacinta, and you are listening and wondering what, what is our culture? Uh, because I'm just wondering how, how long does it take to build and embed a culture in a family? For example, you know, I'm just uh, wondering, like the circles, uh, the, the TV culture, 
uh, was it from day one or what, uh, from what point did you say that now uh, or after how long? You know, because uh, like for us now, we are, we are in marriage for six years. Okay, we have a few things here that we do together, but then if, if, uh, you see, by and large, a number of things are still amorphous in nature. Uh, just maybe a question around that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe Ben, you want to say how, how how long did it take to build that culture to ingrain it? Okay, I think uh, one thing that has really helped us uh, on this is uh, the fact that uh, we've both been uh, privileged to be working from home most of the time. Yes, yes. So the fact that uh, we work from home, we are able to monitor, we are able to yes, guide. Uh, sometimes it doesn't be, especially like when schools close, it becomes a bit of a challenge. But when schools are open, uh, the routine sets in. Uh, but the fact that we've been home most of the time, work from home, since for a long time, that has really helped. And um, you just start, uh, Anthony, just, just start, like just say, uh, from Monday, we'll be doing this. Take it one day at a time. Before you realize, it will be a week. Before we realize, it will be a month, uh, you know, two weeks, one month, one year. And even if you feel like you're faltering, just pick yourself up and continue. Because that happens to us even sometimes. Yeah, we just pick ourselves, we say, oh, yeah, now we have 12, but this week, from Monday, this is going to, we are going back to our contract. Like, you know, for instance, even like when we've gone up country, we've traveled up country, it's sometimes also a bit uh, challenging to maintain the routine. But then when we come back to Nairobi, then we are able to maintain. So it's just a matter of purposing, being intentional, yeah, one day at a time. Thank you. Anthony, I think you get that. The idea is to make it a routine. And over time, it becomes a culture when you feel like when it's that time, that is what should be done. And even members of the family remind you. Uh, at times when people are almost sleepy and we've not prayed, somebody will ask, but we haven't prayed. You see, it's become a culture. Uh, nowadays, when I go back home, uh, I realize that uh, the, the culture of uh, that, that it, it used to be people pray, people eat first, and then there will be a discussion and prayer at the end. But nowadays I realize that they've shifted that. People do all that before and then pray, you see? So well, you can always modify it to be more suitable for you, but it should be a routine long enough, just like uh, people create systems in, uh, we can talk of system actually. People create systems in workplace that on Mondays we will be having this meeting from this time to this time. And wherever you go, you just know that it's Monday, we always start with this meeting. Uh, and that is the way it is. So after, after you've done it uh, uh, continuously in, uh, enough, it becomes a routine. And we know that habits are formed after we've done something repeatedly for at least 21 days or 21 consecutive times. And that becomes a routine. Generally, uh, it becomes part of you and you start feeling like whenever it's not done, something is amiss. Then it's become your culture. That's what I would say. Uh, I hope that made some sense. Yes, that, that made a lot of sense. That's why I pick uh, consistency and persistency. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank yeah. you. Any other comment, question? With regards to this, any other sharing with regards to a culture? Yes, Lillian? Yeah, um, I joined late, but uh, good to see you all again, some familiar names and faces. Um, yeah, to me, family culture is very um, something that I always look forward to. Of course, I haven't done a good job in our family establishing one. So like the question by, was it Anthony? <laughs> it's not perfect because especially we have a young family and so many changing dynamics here, but we try to do the simple things. So like here, for example, um, 
eating at home is a big deal. Like people, like for our family, people will be buying food because they don't have time. But I always try to cook food at home and then have the kids eat it. So, and at least one meal a day, usually dinner. And uh, because breakfast, you know, they are waking up at different times. People are going to different things. Sometimes that's hard to do. I have from a seven, almost eight year old to a three month old. So it's a very, very different dynamics where sometimes you don't have the perfect time to like sit down together even in the evening and pray. But little habits like uh, having them say a prayer and um, do that, you know, they, I always feel like it's helping them to know what our family values are. So those small habits, and hopefully when they grow older, I can do a more uh, elaborate system. Hopefully like some of you, I look forward to establishing some routine where we can actually see it and study the Bible together and pray together and do, you know, some things. Um, usually before, when we had our first child, we loved to travel. So we love driving because here yeah, the roads are good, but I love the road. So, and that's one thing I've been looking forward to because like the oldest, he remembers like when I would go even to a conference far away, we'll drive like a whole day or something to get there instead of getting on the plane, just because I love seeing the different sites and stopping and it, it helps us to connect some more than the usual time when I'm just running around the house and doing you know, things around the house. So those are some things I look forward to uh, doing. But one advice I would seek, I guess, is, I, of course I missed some of the presentation, is what are some things that you think are very important to try, even if you have like, you know, given the dynamics I described, to try and do, to make sure the kids, when you are able to now try to establish a more a stable uh, routine to help you build some culture, what are some things that you think should um, definitely be done, even when they are young like this? Thank, Thank you. you very much, Lillian. Uh, I didn't even know that that was you. I thought it was another Lillian until <laughs> <laughs> Of yeah, course, yeah. I didn't put my other them today intentionally so that you don't, so yeah, you don't yeah. keep on see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to hear you. That's Lillian from uh, the land of opportunities. Uko <laughs> Kwingine. Yeah, so, so we've discussed a lot of things and some of the routines that we've been able to discuss and very beautiful that you are talking about, you are talking about uh, uh, food and it's actually one of those things that we talked about. Language within the family, like there we know some certain language, uh, the vocabularies that when you speak here, it will be obscene, but maybe there it's just okay uh, dress code, what we, what is decent, what is indecent, is our family pro-decency or pro-liberality? There we also know that you have leftists and rightists, we have conservatives like us, and some other guys who are just liberal. They, everything makes sense. So uh, we, we develop culture about food, about language, about dress, what are taboos in the house? Uh, the other day we were talking and you said uh, they went to church. So culture around going to church, if that becomes a routine, that's easy to implement. Every Sunday we're going to church during this time. It becomes something that is a practice that uh, uh, you do. Food, this is a family meal. We eat from home. We don't buy foods elsewhere and eat. No. Today I left early in the morning. Uh, before breakfast, I came at around towards uh, at four actually four after four and i had to somewhat eat in other places i i, I can say that i've not eaten uh, because i'm not used to eating anywhere else so food practices money habits yes do we earn the money or we just spoil our children with money you eat it you've got it you see, that is it. Well, the, 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 how do we spend our money? What is uh, the relationship with money? Prayer time. Is it, what is the time for prayer? Before we sleep, do we pray? Do we encourage personal prayers? Sakwa has shared about taking children to school and picking them. It's a habit that we picked, and it's been very wonderful. Yeah, many people tell me, uh, how do you do it? That one I cannot do. Yeah, my said you cannot allow that. But then we just find ourselves doing it and somewhat it's just working. Yeah. So 
some of these things just make sense uh, as we continue to do them and we just pick what we start with we cannot practice all of them at the same time we just improve one at a time we adopt one uh, we did not start by praying at the beginning but it just came in that we, every evening we do a prayer we we do a litany we do rosary and something like that then we started reading the bible every saturday saturday evening we read a chapter and then we discuss it. Then we started discussing the week on Sundays. Uh, after church, we discuss what did we learn? And then uh, we pick a topic and discuss something like that. So you just pick a few. We, maybe you will also go through the video when you get time and learn some more. Thank you very much. Pascal, my apply. Yeah, maybe maybe you can you can uh, you can project whatever the screen you want, just uh... Uh, so that I make my comments based on that. The last screen you and um... okay, thank you. This one, this one, this one. Yes, yes. So uh, my comment was that, uh, or my input was that, uh, we as the parents, the the culture that you want to maybe uh, drive forward to our children, uh, which they'll take over now, they'll take forward to the next generation. Uh, it's a derivative of the culture that we also took up from our parents. So when you look at, say, the element of language, for example, uh, you find, um, like in the urban settings, you find the uh, parents uh, teaching their kids about uh, how to communicate so much in foreign languages, I can say English, for example, uh, with very little disregard of the national language, Kiswahili, and maybe the vernacular, uh, the, the local dialects. And then um, when they grow up, then we start wondering why, why our kids not able to, uh, to interact with their peers in, the, in, in their local dialect. So if we are taboos, taboos, these are things that we take, we take over from our culture, you you say we as Luos, we as Merus, we as Embus, we as Mijikenda, you get, uh, it's a taboo to do this, it's a taboo to do this, it's a taboo to do this. And uh, we also come and start, based on our upbringing, we start um, also driving this down into our, into our children who we are bringing up. Uh, into the which they take forward to the next generation uh, without uh, knowing what was the origin for that. Uh, dress code, uh, foods that we eat, uh, practices, uh, prayer and worship. Um, like on prayer and worship, I can comment on something uh, which I, I observed. And um, uh, if you look at, like in our case in the Catholic setting, uh, we adapt uh, prayer and worship. Um, uh, doctrines, which are very like uh, 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 so so like static and rigid. Uh, there's things to do with the rosary, things to do with the um, uh, with the mass, and so many other things. But now there's something that comes up uh, uh, when our children uh, will get into old age, and um, uh, when they go out there to look for soulmates. Yeah they come across people who are from other denominations, people who have been brought through ACK, AIC, uh, PCA and all that. And then now you as a parent or a guardian, you find yourself now trying to resolve uh, an issue of uh, how, do you, how do you have your daughter uh, getting married to an ACK uh, uh, maybe a family or from to an AIC family. And uh, you, you hear parents having things to do with worries around. So, mtoto atakuaje at your end mass, atakuaje apokei, how do you start all over all again? And uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, personally uh, mediating in situations whereby young people are coming to seek advice from me that my boyfriend, my boyfriend is from AIC, my boyfriend is from PCA, and I've, uh, I'm worried that my mother will not accept this uh, if we, I introduce him to that, because you see, we have been staunch Catholics. Uh, how will that go? And even in our local church, I saw a situation whereby the man gave in, and uh, the, 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 the lady side were very strict that 
the wedding must be done from the AIC and the man has to move in for, into the AIC denomination and start worshiping, get out of the Catholic doctrine and now join the wife, the newlywed wife into the AIC. But I can say, unfortunately, that, that relationship after wedding lasted for only one month. So um, it's, a very, uh, it's a very serious issue that maybe most of us young parents, we ignore. And um, uh, like for me, uh, this one, we, dis we, had, we discussed this with my partner and um, uh, what we did is that we introduced what I call like, uh, like uh, a, a, blended, a blended way of uh, say doing worship or uh, uh, praying in the house. So like uh, maybe on Monday is the day for Lozali, Tuesday is the day for Divine Mercy, Wednesday would be the day for praise and worship. Uh, Thursday would be a day for, for uh, what we call prayers of the faithful. Uh, Friday would be for maybe Lozali again, Saturday would be for something else. So that now uh, these kids, even as they grow to, to play in the Catholic church, uh, they will be able to know how to do prayers of the faithful so that if they get into a situation nearby, they are told, uh, Paul, can you pray for us? Then divine uh, mercy. So answer for the sake of your soul passion. <laughs> um, <and> then now <laughs> is the middle of a corporate meeting and uh, <laughs> uh, people are wondering what is that? So you bring up a kid who is able to know how to do prayers of the faithful. If they get to get married to the deliverance, uh, in future they get to move into the deliverance worship, they have known how to do praise and worship. In the, <laughs> so the only things we don't do is pray, pray, praying in tongues. So if they get married to a Catholic, you'll be knowing how to lead in, uh, in the rosary, in divine mercy and all those prayers. So I think um, when it comes to, to prayer, there's a, you need to look at it from uh, in, in that, like for us, I'm sharing, that is how we, uh, we do it. Then on issues of money, uh, this is quite straightforward, whatever, how you spend your money, uh, your kids will just uh, follow uh, through that. Uh, personal development, then uh, relationship and health. If we instill fitness and healthy eating in your family, then they are going to uh, to adapt that uh, all through. So uh, what I would say, uh, there's an example that you were given one time by a priest in church in, in relation to what Moredi was asking about culture. Uh, the priest was giving us a story of a family where uh, they used to pray and every day they used to pray, they used to have a cat called Tamasha. So them there, before they pray, they would, you'd say, let us also bring along Tamasha as we pray. So they would, every day they are praying, they would pick Tamasha and then they start praying Tamasha is at the sofa and then they pray. Then it continued, the kids grow, grew up seeing the, them praying together with the cat. And then at some point, them there died. So after them there died, now the kids now continue to pray. But now uh, they continued picking the cat along uh, Tamasha to pray. Until now, it, it became a point when, where by now they will start questioning, why are we doing this? Why are you still bringing over the cat uh, to pray? And uh, this was Amze's practice. And because of uh, what we call culture in, in our settings, uh, it was very difficult for the family to detach uh, from praying together with the cat. They, they even started associating the cat with the spirit of Amze who had passed on. So the practice was ended by the day the cat itself died. <laughs> so as we develop cultures in our family, it's also good to look at uh, are there cultures which might positively progress and are there cultures that might negatively progress? Thank you very much. Over. Thank you very much. What you've said is just uh, what we were talking about. Every practice must have two things, meaning and direction. What is the meaning of this? And where is it leading us? And that's where, where we were talking about certain taboos, like we were told, uh, uh, I gave an example of, uh, you don't, as a fisherman, I was a fisherman, you don't wash your hand with soap when you are eating fish uh, or after eating fish. And you wonder, okay, how is this related to fish in the lake? You see, some of these things did not make sense, but until we put meaning to them and we see where they're leading us, the direction, it becomes a problem. 
you've given a nice story which makes me remember another culture that was uh, in the barracks where an army commander had said that some two soldiers were always to guard a particular uh, bench there. Uh, it was a public bench. So they were always, uh, there were always two people to sent to guard it. And this practice went on and on and on. And later, so many years, decades later, uh, after like the fourth, fifth commander came in and found this tradition going on. And he asked, why do we do this? Oh, I found it being done. The other person asked, the other person asked, finally they reached the guy who was, who initiated the program. And they asked him, why do we always guard this bench? And then he, he asked, oh, do you mean the bench is still wet? It, it had wet paint. So people were guarding it because nobody else was supposed to sit on it because it had wet paint, but people just picked it. We should not just pick a culture like that. It should have a meaning and it should have a direction. For example, if we say taboo, we see like in some family, a friend of mine, in their family, there is no song that is not gospel. You cannot start singing, singing Pongo La, yeah, or, or, or Tony Nyadundo. No, no, no. You cannot put such songs. <laughs> it's a taboo. So what is it? What is the meaning of this? And what, where is it leading us? Thank you very much, Pascal. And I saw uh, Sakwa wanted to share something. Yeah, maybe I, I guess we need to make a comment too. Uh, that one, when when we do these things right, when we inculcate these values well, uh, at the end of the day, when the children pick up, and uh, this is mostly uh, to, to Anthony, when the children start picking them up, actually they are the ones now who get to remind you that they're oh, we, we did not do this, and then they, they remind you that the things that they realize, okay, now it's actually getting stuck in a shikang uh, the other thing that is also very, very important for us to keep from all the hard days to the sharing is that apart from persistence and uh, and patience, it also requires commitment. If you are planning to go for a hike, it will require to commit. There's that aspect of commitment. There's that aspect of time that you're going to spend. So there's that bit of also prioritization. Yeah. So commitment is very, very important. When there's commitment, there's persistence and there's patience in all these values that you're going to pass to the children. And at the end of the day, we can pat ourselves on the back and say it's done well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pascal, did you want to add something? No, no, I'm through. I'm through. Okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. A, a, any other hand up? I don't see a hand up. Now, maybe uh, as we conclude, Lillian, you want to say something? No, I just wanted to say real quickly that I like the I, the question you point about, I think it was the Sakwa and somebody, sorry, I can't remember who, the one you point out about like the future when the kids grow up, the cultures that we train them to, and then when they actually um, you know, meet their spouses and want to settle down. I um, One of the privileges I had was I went to, so my grandmother is the one, my our my dad's family, paternal family, was mostly Catholic, but I was very close to my grandmother, who was a very strong uh, Catholic woman, and she, you know, she brought me up seeing those practices because I spent most of my childhood with her, so they were embedded in. But then, for some reason, I always went to French schools throughout my my studies. So from when I was nine years old, I went to Quaker French school from Kaimosi. I mean, from uh, Liranda, then Kaimosi. So I, and in those, you know how those the schools were boarding schools. So, you know, we do the prayers and all of these things in the morning and certain things at night and things like that and go to church, you know, so of course it was quicker. One of the things I learned from that, even now, as I think about raising my kids that I hope I will do is to be very open, to let them know that uh, the point that Paul said, the meaning of the culture, the practices that we do, because I feel, especially with the world now, we are going to a point where things are watered down or made like this person against that person. But if the kids grow up knowing, because for me, the value I see especially is in knowing the value of prayer. Why do I pray? What is my belief in God? And what is, you know, like what's your relationship with God? And things like that, your actions and the things you do and the, the dreams you have, all of that to help them know that 
it's not about I'm a Catholic, I'm a friends, or I'm a this and that, this and that. Of course, it's easier when people meet under the same group, the same religion, then it's easier for them to make a strong family, but not always, even sometimes the same, um, the same uh, sect or group will always have issues. So really the person that maybe you might think is not fit for your child might be the person that will actually, they need that God has prepared for them. So having like that, um, I think I wouldn't say it's liberal to me. I don't like to use that term because it's really a strong belief and finding meaning in what we do is the most important than just the cultures. But then to them, they can also go up when they grow up. For example, for me, I also had examples, my own family, was um, we never really had that. So I don't really know how to think about culture in my own family because it was kind of um, not united family. But when there are people that I met along the way that really had good culture or cultures that when I reflect on, I want my kids to have those kinds of behaviors and not exactly that, but I want them to have some values in life to believe in something because when they don't, then it's easy for them to get derailed by many other things that are going on in the world. So I think that's what I always pray and strive for. Um, yeah, and that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Apparently even in, in, like in your neighborhood where a prayer uh, can be a source of mockery. If a child doesn't understand why we pray, then it becomes another, uh, maybe something else, which uh, is for shame or something. So uh, that, is, that is very important. We need to attach meaning to everything we do. And by the way, even in explaining faith, like uh, 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 Pascal says, I was privileged to come from a background that has everybody. We are predominantly Muslims and uh, SDS. Yeah, quite a departure from the traditional Catholic. And that made me to be very tolerant. I'm very tolerant to almost everybody, uh, to the extent that when I came to Nairobi and I realized that people hate, uh, enough people really hate Muslims. And I'm wondering, these people, do they really know Muslims? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I know them, I've lived with them, I've learned with them, I've schooled with them. So uh, I've, I've learned to be that tolerant. And all I try is to explain the meaning of everything we do in church, the meaning of everything we do in Catholic and I know that God is for us all. God is everybody, the same God being worshipped everywhere. Otherwise, uh, in, in, uh, we, we wanted to talk about these questions to ponder, which we've done. Yeah. So um, the, the next question is, what culture did I pick from my childhood, which we have uh, been able to share as well, and how it has impacted on us? And uh, the question we need to ask ourselves now is, is my culture working for me? And uh, if it's not working for me or for us as a family, then what is it that we need to do? I like when uh, Lillian has just mentioned that uh, she's looking forward to having strong values that uh, she can inculcate in her family. Are we intentional in having these values? Do we know what our values are? For us who are in employment, we know the values and at times when we are going through appraisals, we are even appraised based on whether we lived as per the company values. But when we come to the house, do the children know that this is our value? For example, if it is honesty, do they tell us when they've broken a glass or they know a nitachapwa? So I would rather keep quiet. Have we already told them that that is a value that we practice and we keep reminding them? Are we proud of that family culture that we have uh, as at now? So uh, these are the questions that uh, we think we should uh, uh, keep on asking ourselves, uh, even as we keep on working on our families and making them better each and every day. We need to have a vision, we need to have a mission, and those are some things that we can always work on if we already, do, if we don't have them as we speak. Yeah, and they will lead us to that type of family which we want to have, that dream family. To us, we, we've always wanted to be a, a point of inspiration to people who want to get into this vocation of family life, the marriage life. We do not become part of the doom prophets of doom, yeah. where you, you can't say, you, you can't be an encouragement to others. Instead, you are a source of discouragement. You are one of those people who prove to them that it actually doesn't, uh, doesn't work. It's not worth it. That's not what we want to do. Otherwise, uh, uh, that is it for us. We are open for comments. 
with final comments and then we can have a final prayer. Anybody with a comment, Lucy, say. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, PP and uh, Edna. I, I, today I, it was my duty in our family culture to cook. <laughs> so I'll ju I'm just done with the cooking now. I, I'm trying to struggle with catching up, but I got the tail end of it of the family culture which I really, really appreciate. And I appreciate the small input I've gotten. And I just want to emphasize that uh, creating those family cultures is like planting a seed, uh, which grows little by little, like a mustard seed. And we have to wait upon patiently. And uh, at the end of the day, that mustard seed becomes a tree where even the birds and whatever, they all nest, they all shed, and becomes uh, something that benefits gen many generations. So I really thank you for this uh, insightful topic. And uh, I don't know whether I may be repeating what you had already said, uh, another aspect we can look at, or maybe you have already touched on, is the culture of family love. You know, watching each other's back as uh, as the children grow up. Uh, because uh, in the family is where you can be naked and not ashamed. Uh, if you see your brother is suffering and he has, you're, instead of laughing at him or being embarrassed, what you'll do is to look out how you can watch his back, how you can help, how you can cover him up. You know, you're not ashamed of his nakedness. So that is one way where you should cre create a culture where when one has issues or has a problem, there's always a place to run to, and that is the family. That is the place where you are naked but not ashamed because you have a lot of uh, love and support and goodwill. So if we create that from early on, uh, on onset, you know, from early age, that love is what is binding this family together. And uh, most of your deeds are driven by family love. At the end of the day, you are going to be happy and you'll always feel secure that you're not working alone. Yeah, thank you very much for also the talk and uh, coming up with that. Thank you. Uh, very beautiful. Thank you very much, Lucy. Jungu ku halikosi ukoko. Yes, Rosa. Thank you very much. I really want to thank you guys for this talk. It's a wonderful talk. And uh, thank you for facilitating it and for all the insights you've got. You are very far. You are very distant from your mic. I'm saying may, may God bless you for this talk. It's been a wonderful one. And uh, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to hear that. Yes. Uh, any other final comments? Uh, Otherwise, everyone, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see ZP. Uh, and uh, all these other people uh, who've joined us, Elizabeth, Lorenge, and all the other people. Otherwise, we can have a final prayer. Every last Friday of the month, we always have some session, a day like this. And so keep tuning in. Uh, for those who came late, we've uh, recorded it. We will put it on our YouTube. We also had it on uh, on our Facebook page live. Otherwise, somebody can uh, give us final prayer uh, to end it all. Somebody to offer and pray for us as we close. Can I volunteer? It's like people are afraid yes, of rain. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs>
Thank you. Okay, let us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for your infinite goodness. God, in your own special way, you created the family unit as the cell on which humanity is based. This is your own creation, your own institute that, Lord, you jealously guard. Thank you for putting us in families. Thank you also because within these families, we continue to seek you. Even in this group, we hold each other's hand to seek you, Lord, and to promote our family love within ourselves and even outside our own family cells. We pray for stronger families, God-fearing families, families that know that God, you are God, and you love us and you love the family institution. We pray even for the families that are struggling with various issues. Let them be firm and look at their strengths against their weaknesses and build on those strengths and they may become a culture of love and a culture of support. And Lord, within there, your love may be based. And where there is love, Lord, you are ever present. Lord, we pray for your presence in families and you be their beacon of hope. We thank you for Peter, Paul, and Edna for the great zeal they have in promoting the family institution. Strengthen them, fill them with wisdom, fill them with more graces as they work with this journey and as they continue holding our hands in this journey of family life. We praise you and we thank you and we give you all the glory as we say glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it and was in the beginning, the beginning now, is now, and shall be, one without end. Without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, good people.